Hi, my name is Karen. I am the founder of a startup called Glow Beauty. What we do is help consumers reduce their consumption in new products, reuse what's safe to rehome and recycle what isn't. So I'm all about mindful consumption, buying things that you'll actually use and love and helping people rehome what didn't work out for them because beauty is an enormously wasteful industry. Now, apparently I have some very strong opinions about shampoo and I have, you know, shared that on TikTok and apparently with my friends, but it kind of spurred this moment of like, wait a minute, is my favorite shampoo the best thing out there? How does it stack up against some other very popular brands? And so today I have California Naturals, Odell, Salt Air, Kristen S, Monday, and native all lined up for you. I spent weeks reviewing these products. I made my sister try them all as well. We had a leaderboard up in our bathroom. This is kind of my side and my rankings. And I'm just gonna walk you through my whole thought process. You know, what I really love in a product. I'm gonna tell you more about my hair, products I've used in the past. So what I'm really looking for is an outlier in performance. It has to be just as good as what I would get from the salon when my hairstylist cuts my hair like once or twice a year. It has to have great ingredients. I care a lot about having clean and green ingredients. It's of course like, is it greenwashing, whatever? Yes and no, the beauty industry is highly unregulated, but there is, you know, merit to having better ingredients. But I know that that's at this point more of a personal preference. So that's just what I'm looking for. It has to have a really luxe scent. It has to be reminiscent of some of the top fragrance brands out there these days, especially in niche fragrances, which I love. Yes, I'm allergic to them, but like, you know, I know a lot about it, especially brands like Lola Bow by Rado. Like I want that level of luxe, but you know, even those luxury fragrances, whenever they come out with shampoos, like they're never actually great. What you're paying for is a scent. So it's, you know, best to leave kind of the great hair care products to the hair care brands. Also texture. I care a lot about the user experience in my beauty products because there are just so many to choose from that, you know, a handful of moisturizers, cleansers, shampoos, whatever in my shower, where I get ready for the day and whatever I end up reaching for always ends up to be a little bit better in terms of user experience than something else. So like, yes, everything's going to work and perform and do what it says it will, but what is worth repurchasing and what is going to, you know, add that little bit more joy into my daily routine. That's what I'm looking for is that extra little spark. And yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of an introduction. Uh, and then the lighting is going to be super inconsistent because I don't have my whole up here i'm just using natural light so excuse me for any of the cuts and edits but hopefully everything here will be making sense and all this information is helpful to you in some way so uh let's get started i bought all the shampoos at target that were kind of like kind of had appealing packaging you know they're trying to be hip with it premium but at target so it's affordable and i bought a lot of shampoo and conditioner right here. So during my initial online foray into this realm, I wanted to see what people were saying in general about the reviews outside of the paid influencer realm of fake reviews, because honestly, if you give me anything for free, I will like it so much more than if I actually paid for it. And for all of these products, I use my own money to buy all of them because one, I don't trust consumer reviews anymore. And two, I am deeply distrustful of CPG companies and their owned brands and their claims. Most of these brands are kind of indie at the moment. Like they're not acquired by Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Unilever and the like, except for Native. But they all seem to have a very similar value proposition, which is like better ingredients, uh, like salon level looks formulations, but like affordable because it's still available at Target. Online, all the reviews, every, someone has claimed that they lost hair because of a shampoo. At first this really freaked me out, but as I looked into more and more of the reviews of the brands, I realized that everyone associates hair loss with the shampoo that they are using. So we're just gonna ignore that part, I'm acknowledging it now. 
but this is just a part of the territory, I guess. So first of all, my hair and what, like this is, this is all of course reviewed by me, by my tastes and my hair type. So I have mostly straight hair with a bit of a wave. It's a medium thickness. I have a mix of both like thinner strands and thicker strands, but overall it's just kind of like medium. It doesn't love to hold a curl, but it will for a while. And I, in general, like have to use sulfate free shampoos because there's a weird itchy flaky part on my scalp that gets really irritated if I use any super harsh ingredients there. So that is something that I have had to stray away from. Brands that I have loved and like my golden standard is always Playa. I did not think that a shampoo could change my life or a conditioner and actually start with the conditioner, but it did. First of all, I love the fragrance. It smelled like a high-end spa in the Bahamas or something. And the formulation was, and like texture was unlike anything I had ever used before. It was like pillowy, jello-y, like lush. And it really provided so much moisture. And it was, it was never stripping exactly. Like I, it checked boxes I didn't even know I wanted checked off. And also the conditioner was so deeply moisturizing I started using it on my dog's tail. Her hair is so fine, it's like a Swiffer. The wind blows through it and it mats. And every like four to six months or so, I would have to shave down her tail completely because it would be matted like wool, just like completely felted. But with the ply conditioner, it was I was actually able to keep her plumage feathery and beautiful. Here she is, hi Bluebee. Yeah, this pupper has the most intense hair care needs of any creature known to mankind. I used to use Playa, but it was very expensive. So then I would kind of alternate with uh, a brand that I really liked from Whole Foods called Acure. I also used Verb for a really long time. I liked that it was premium, but also cheaper than most of the other premium hair care brands that they had at Sephora. But for some reason, like I just didn't think it was totally worth it. So those bottles kind of sat, like I use it sometimes, but it just wasn't reaching for it. Thing about my bathroom is that it is full of products. I have like multiple versions of things that do the exact same thing, more or less. And my sister kind of uses everything in my shower, just kind of like, like a try it before you buy it kind of a situation because I always have so much. Anyways, she used up all my verb. She loves it and we still buy it in bulk for her. And that is her favorite. Another hair care brand that I really love, especially for their styling products, is Oribe. I find most drugstore hair care products, they just, I hate this, like I'm just so sensitive to very artificial synthetic fragrances and like that L'Oreal hairspray, whatever, like I can't stand it at all. So Oribe is kind of my go-to for styling products. I've used Bumble and Bumble. Again, I didn't ever think it was really justified for the price. I love Davines, um, or Davines, I don't actually know how to say it, but my hairstylist uses it. Um, it's super sustainable, like probably the original ultra sustainable hair care brand because everything they have is recyclable. They are an Italian brand. Their stuff is amazing, but again, it is more on the more expensive side. Also used a lot of like very high end products that are available in hotels like Bulgari, which my dad loves. And the reason he loves it is because it foams so much with so little product. So that's another hallmark of high-end products. It's a, a little goes a long way. Like it's not super watery, but also things that cause the foaming action are oftentimes very stripping. So you don't actually need a whole lot of bubbles to actually clean anything from your laundry to your hair, to your face. It, it's actually more of a psychological thing that like, you know, bubbles carry away the dirt. It doesn't actually. It's completely a user experience situation. And I've also tried using like shampoo bars from Lush. Cause at one point I was like, no more plastic. Let's see what we can get without packaging. And you know what? It was just really messy. Those bars just kind of like melt in the shower. It, you have to take them out of the shower when you're not using them. They didn't perform amazing. Like the conditioner was so mediocre. Yes, the shampoo bars are cleanses, but I just, they were just too high maintenance. Yeah, and then, you know, like Lusitant had those, they were kind of like one of the first to have those refillable plastic bags um, that you can refill your old bottles. So that's what I used for a really long time until my scalp was like, 
no more of this. And yeah, that's kind of like my shampoo conditioner history for the last like 10 years. Starting from the bottom and kind of like work our way to what I think is the best and worth your money. Coming in in last place is Monday. It has a nauseatingly floral scent that also somehow reminds me of a Barbie dream house, but not in like the cute Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie version of Barbie that came out this past summer. It's more like the actual plastic, like if a toy manufacturer had to scent the Barbie dream house, it would kind of smell like this. It, there's just something I don't like about it. It's also a scent I would describe as this is what shampoo manufacturers think women will like and what they should smell like. I don't know. It's not great. I understand that like the packaging is very insta friendly. It looks cute. But I mean, isn't the whole millennial pink thing so passe? Like, is it not cliche at this point? It's a super liquidy texture. This one says smooth. I'm for frizz and dull hair. Zero smoothing action, zero defrizzing. The next shampoo that I used once and I was like, I never want to use this ever again is Salt Air. I feel like I had to use so much. It was so liquidy. I actually, you know, got a couple pumps and then had to go and get more because I feel like it just wasn't enough product to get a good lather and a good clean. And then it was just like the packaging, I see where they're going for like a more sustainable element. Something I didn't like is a lack of transparency in the ingredients. It's just not anywhere here. You have to go to the bottom and lift and peel the label. So I don't love that. Yes, aluminum is recyclable, but pumps are not. So this is still gonna go to landfill, but also like what has absolutely blown my mind is that this was an Allure Best of Beauty winner. I had high expectations for this and it was just not meant. I can't wait to get rid of this because I won't even keep it around for other people to choose to use. Like it's just that bad. What I would call the mid basics, get the job done, not terrible to use, and it works and delivers, native. First time I ever used this because I bought this as travel shampoo, I used it and I was like, I hate this. This is not what I wanted. It's because I forgot to pack my ply. So I forced myself to use this a couple times during that week. I was away and then was just trying to get rid of it. But then I was like, wait, I'm gonna do this review series and I'm gonna keep it and use it again. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but I think there's better stuff out there. It has a minimal ingredients list, but like, that's just it. There's nothing else really to it. And if you're looking for a very short ingredients list, great. If you're looking for ingredients that will help support your hair's maintenance and like repair and all that, there are some other things at around the exact same price point. Kristen S surprised me. I did not think I was going to like this. I did not like the scent at all at first, but it's actually not so bad and it doesn't really linger around. Uh, what I noticed was that the shampoo itself was kind of stripping, but the conditioner really brought things back. So this is, you know, a great shampoo. If you're, if you like the scent, the scent is not for me. It is just a little too sweet, fruity, floral but I understand why it is so popular. The scent immediately reminded me of high school because I had this Marc Jacobs Olola perfume and I was like, it smells exactly like that. And it's because it has the exact same notes of magnolia, pear. Yeah, I found that the shampoo, good leather. I find the consistency is pretty standard. Nothing really special about the texture. It, the shampoo was, gave you that like squeaky clean feeling, which I don't always love. Like maybe I would want that in a detox shampoo if like you're really trying to strip out all the products, but I didn't love that. But the conditioner did balance it out really well and provided some much needed moisture after that. Um, I think that I really like this packaging for travel because you can easily refill it with other products. And this little flip top is pretty handy. Um, so I'll keep this around if, I ever finish it, I will be reusing these tubes because it is kind of handy to like squeeze out the last bits when you're traveling and the cap. I like that the product is just kind of gonna go to the bottom, it'll come out. Now, we are finally getting to a brand where I would definitely consider repurchasing. And that was Odell. 
I have never heard of this brand before, but there's some things that I really like. I really like that they have a lot of post-consumer recycled plastic. Everything is recyclable, including the cap. There's no pump. So, you know, you can easily toss that all into your curbside recycling, which is always fantastic. And this is the Moisture Repair Shampoo and Conditioner. And it made me believe that you can have different formulations for different kinds of shampoo. It's not all marketing because this shampoo didn't feel stripping at all. It almost felt like I was using a conditioner to wash with. That's how smooth it felt as I was rinsing it out. It has a really great lather. You don't need a ton of product. It is slightly more liquidy than my favorite. The scent is super subtle, truly unisex. And yeah, and both my sister and I, and I would say my sister is way pickier about her hair care products. We both said that this would be something that we would be willing to keep in the shower. For her, she'd be using both Verb and this sometimes. This one is cheaper. I feel like if you need something that cleanses a little bit more deeply, we would go back to our usuals. So my favorite shampoo going into this was California Naturals. Well, Playa, and then they don't make that anymore, but they brought back the same formula, the different scent form of a super affordable hair care line. I love it so much that I've purchased enough that I could put a pump on both the shampoo and the conditioner. It, they're both so thick. They both should come with a pump, but I like that they don't because pumps are not eco-friendly because they can't be recycled but I can reuse the pumps across different bottles as I replace them, so that's good. Without the pump, the one thing I don't like about California Naturals is that it's hard to store upside down and it's hard to get those last little bits out because the cap doesn't let this stand upside down. And what really wins me over in terms of it is the texture and the overall user experience coupled with the fragrance. It just performs, I think, way better than so many other high-end shampoos outperforms everything at this price point at Target. A little goes a long, long way with this stuff. And I find that I don't need a leave-in conditioner after my hair gets really clean after the first shampoo. I don't ever feel like I need to do it again. And the conditioner is just the thickest, butteriest, like I'm pretty sure other brands would sell it as a hair mask. And I am so grateful that it's come out because I can continue to maintain my dog's beautiful tail and plumage now that Playa is no longer manufactured. And there we have it. I hope that this was helpful in case you are looking for your next go-to, I don't want to think about it, Target shampoo conditioner purchase. Like you just want to get in, get out all the time. And I really think that people should give it a try. If you're into kind of like more of a unisex, woodier scent, this might be for you, especially if you're not into very floral or fruity scents that are typically marketed towards women. But I do understand that some people, the scent might not be for everyone. It doesn't stay in your hair, but in the shower, I am, of course, I'm someone who understands that if something's overpowering and you don't like the scent, you just don't like it. Um, if you don't like the scent, I think you should really check out Odell. It is more subtle in terms of the scent, but still performs really well. But again, no one has the same texture as California Naturals. And that's something that I just love about the user experience, like getting into the shower and looking forward to something as silly as washing your hair is pretty cool. Now, um, they also, California Naturals also has a really cool two-in-one that has a really unique texture. It's almost like a conditioning shampoo. You kind of, put it in almost like a hair mask and it doesn't foam or lather and it doesn't lather until you're rinsing it out. And I find that on days where I know I'm going to be washing my hair again the next day and I don't want to waste both shampoo and conditioner, I'll use a two in one. Like if I'm wearing a helmet going roller skating the next day, I'm like, I'm going to go back to the skate park and do it all over again. Then I will use the two in one just because it is a lot gentler, just cleans everything and it I'm good to go after that. I think it's the only two-in-one I've ever actually been like, oh, this is a two-in-one. And like, I don't have excuse to like not work out anymore because I used to wash my hair with really expensive products and they'd be like, no, I can't work out and get sweaty because I'll have to wash my hair again. And it just uses more products and it's more money. Um, now I don't really care as much. I hope this is helpful. I also did another comparison. I do more reviews over on TikTok, but the really long thorough ones I do like to keep for YouTube because you can 
click around with the different markers and apparently people find this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions that I forgot to address. Just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. I'm usually pretty good with that. And if there's anything else you want me to give my opinion on, let me know.